All right, this is gonna be a, a video about a Power Fist uh, buffing motor that I got. This is an eight-inch model. It's a variable speed, so you can uh, go from uh, 3450 RPM down to 2000 RPM. The model number on this is 8656860. It was on sale recently, so that's why I picked it up. I'd read that the uh, buffing wheels aren't so great with these things. It's kind of an accurate uh, depiction. I tried to piggyback this on my grinding uh, stand, but it ended up being kind of wobbly, so I had to extend the base by two feet by two feet more or less and put some casters on it. It's pretty good. If I was to lower this a little bit further down towards the waist level, I think it would be a little more stable. There are times when it can be tippy. And another thing uh, that I had been planning to do but just I got in a hurry and didn't deal with it was that uh, the grinding wheel will throw waste towards the uh, buffing wheel which is not really acceptable so when I made this uh, wood table I should have cut it just to the width of the uh, buffing motor because then the uh, the shield for the grinding wheel I could have made a little duct to throw the material down below the uh, pleats so it doesn't uh, get the thing dirty on the other side, there's another 8-inch uh, grinder. This one's a Mastercraft 55 35 16-6. I think this is about 10 years old now. I use it a bit here and there. Right now I've got a, uh, a wire wheel on it, which uh, actually was a real pain in the butt to get that to work. You need to get a uh, some spacers. I can't remember the name of the uh, brand. Maybe Tusk? You go to Princess Auto and you look in the grinder section, you will find some of these plastic spacers and they're concentric. And I think it, it comes up to about this wide. And you just keep uh, removing sections until you get the right diameter that you want. And by doing that, you can see it or not. And on the shaft there, Probably not going to zoom to the correct thing. Anyway, you need to do that so that the uh, offsets the uh, wheel so it's not rubbing on the inside of the housing here. I tried using some thick washers initially to do that and that didn't work. It made the thing wobble. It was just the balance wasn't right. I haven't used this thing too much to be honest. It's a necessity but I don't use it every day. Came with a stand, hold some uh, grinding discs. So I guess we'll fire this up. The recommended procedure for doing that is uh, make sure it's unplugged, turn it on, especially if you've never used it before. Make sure that uh, it is not going to be spinning towards your body. Just plug it in and run out of the room. Come back in five minutes. The first time I turned this on, it started throwing pieces of fabric all over the place because not all of them were sewn in. So you don't want to be standing in between this thing when it turns on. So like I said, you just turn it on and run out of the room. The same goes with the uh, grinding wheels. With them, at least before you uh, fire it up, you can kind of tap on to give them a ring to make sure that they're solid. I can see something sticking out over here. So that's what you're going to be dealing with. Well, make sure you have a vacuum nearby. So it's uh, 7 amps, 
three quarter horsepower. So I'm gonna turn this off. See how long it takes to spin down. Not too bad, I guess, because it doesn't have uh, stones on it like the grinder, so it shuts down pretty quick. But what do you make of that? <laughs> so uh, another thing that was on sale at the time was a NK polishing kit. So it came with some. Uh, additional 8 inch buffing wheels so I'll just pop that open quick the reason I bought this rather than buying everything separate was because I thought it was going to come with a book inside of it but little did I know just a, a piece of paper so it kind of tells you for what material what kind of uh, buffing material to use Comes with uh, four packs of uh, buffing uh, compound. You can get this in tubes from different companies and what have you. Before I'm going to be using, I think this would be adequate. It comes with uh, three more buffing wheels of various materials. So you got like a cloth one. This thing here. And this here. I suspect they're quite a bit better quality than uh, what came with the motor. Let's just see if this is tight enough or not. They have like uh, right and left threads. It's not exactly 100% tight. You just have to use some channel locks on the shafts when you want to tighten it. There's no other way to get a purchase on it. So anyway, that's the tool. I'm going to do a video here. Where I'm going to polish this thing here. It's a slapper for doing body work, but it's, uh, it comes with a fairly harsh surface and it's got a flat edge here and here. And you, that's not very desirable. When you're uh, slapping on a compound curve or what have you, it'll leave a line, which is no good. So uh, I'll do a little bit of reading in the instructions here and I'll uh, fire this thing up and do some work with it. All right, so I made a quick discovery here. The uh, kit came with uh, four compounds. The instructions have six columns. So for doing steel, I need to have black emery, which I've got. Then I can use green stainless or blue all purpose. I don't have the uh, green or the blue. So I guess I can use the uh, black emery. which is this one here. I'll put it on this guy. And uh, I can do the uh, first part of the buffing. But it looks like I'll have to go and obtain some more of the stuff to finish the job. All right, so uh, looking at the instructions, it says to use uh, 3000 RPM or less, which is interesting because you're really, you're looking at the uh, surface speed of this uh, material. It depends on the uh, diameter so if you're using a 4 inch diameter, the surface speed would be a lot different than an 8 inch diameter. It would be going by quite a bit faster. So uh, anyway, I know I probably need to use a low speed, so I'm glad I got the uh, variable speed motor here. So I just had 2000 RPM right now. I'm going to apply some material. I'm wearing gloves, of course. See, it just takes a little nibble out of it. How much, I don't know. Hopefully uh, nothing horrible happens here. I guess uh, one thing you gotta consider is uh, where you want this to be thrown if it uh, gets away from you. So the, it's coming down this way. So you probably wanna be just around here. If you're too far, you'll throw it at the wall. Well, that's interesting, the way it changes speed and reacts. The way you load up the motor, it, it kind of acts kind of funny. I don't know if I like that. Here. 
guess you don't have trouble with the uh, speed changing quite as much when you set it to full power here. Well, I'm in a bit of dismay here with the way this thing is behaving. I might end up going back to Princess Auto. I'm just get a single speed unit the way this thing uh, reacts to load is kind of bizarre. like a protective coating on this and I'm kind of slowly working my way through it. This is not going to be a super fast uh, end result. Perhaps I should have gone over this with like a dual action sander to uh, clean it up with some uh, different layers of sandpaper before I uh, started this process. But anyway, that's uh, I guess a bit be it for this video, the end of the video, sorry. Other than we'll give it one more try here. And then I put load on it. That's with the knob uh, pathway. So I guess you have to be careful not to put much pressure on it. But then now it's kind of like flat with the knob. Again, so you can't put very much pressure on it. Now I just said 2000 RPM. So I'll keep uh, playing around with this thing, see if I can figure it out. And uh, if I have some results to show you, uh, I'll add to the video. Alright, so I'm still trying to figure out how to use the buffing wheel. So uh, it wasn't going super well with the uh, slapping spoon that I was using. So I put some uh, the gray compound onto the wheel to do a, a body hammer. So I've used this body hammer a little bit, so I know the plastic coating is gone off of it. But I still think that uh, these may not be ready to be polished. I probably should have used, uh, like I said, a dual action sanding disc uh, to prep these a little bit more. We'll see what we can do for uh, an end result. that's doing pretty good but it can only polish so much right it's just supposed to correct the uh, irregularities in the surface this is not a, uh, a grinder or sandpaper so put a little bit more compound on it give it a little another shot
see with the light here or not, but uh, it is working, but it's not going to remove uh, deep, deep scratches either. It's going to just uh, polish up the remainder of uh, whatever you start off with. So uh, forgive me for the beginning of my video. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it's not that hard to learn either because like 10 minutes in, I'm quite a bit more comfortable with the machine. So uh, when you're using the uh, variable speed unit, you can't put a lot of pressure on it because it will stall it out. But it does recover. So uh, if you're putting that much pressure on it, I would say you're probably putting too much anyway because it's not really that, uh, it's not a grinding wheel. You shouldn't be feeding it too hard. So you put the different compounds on. You will need to buy a couple more compounds to come in the kit. Or you can look elsewhere and get more professional compounds and tubes and different things to go that route. And uh, definitely uh, when you buy one of these, you'll probably need to buy a dual action sanding disc as well. So you can uh, get your uh, tools and whatnot ready to be polished. So otherwise, I think it seems like it's uh, a pretty good purchase. I'm going to use it a fair amount when I'm building uh, on my car here. So thanks for watching.